Hey guys, it's me, Daniel, for your name here, and welcome to a brief history of the development of the discovery of the atom. To start off, let's go all the way back to 465 BC. Lucipius, a Greek philosopher in Greece, theorized that the universe is composed of two elements, the atoms and the void in which they exist and move. Now, flash forward to 400 BC, Democritus, Leucipius' apprentice, adopted the theory and added to it. His theory exactly was, number one, all matter consists of individual particles called atoms, or as Democritus named it, a tomos, which is Greek for uncuttable or indivisible. These so-called a tomos were indestructible, and atoms were solid but indivisible. Four atoms were in homogeneous. Five atoms are different in shape, size, mass, position, and arrangement. For example, solids are made of small, pointy atoms, liquids are made of big, round atoms, and oils are made of very fine and small atoms that can easily slip past each other. So basically, in his mind, he developed a sphere. You may think this extremely sad, but given the context of the study, I mean, I guess it's pretty good. And only, how did you think that they presented this new idea to the public? Once again, given the context, they probably had the access to several amazing artists. You think about it, there were a lot of artists at the time. And since they were well-known philosophers, they probably w could have commissioned a painting of the new discovery. But really, imagine how that meeting went. Hello. Um, oh my Zeus. Democracy. Democracy. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to paint me a model of my newest discovery. Ah, uh, and what would it be, sir? A sphere. Ah. Uh. Okay, let me get up uh, he probably would have been extremely disappointed. And now we fast forward to 1803, to the English town of Manchester. John Dalton, a meteorologist and teacher at the time, had just published his atomic theory. Now think of this. Democritus published his in 400 BC. It's 1803 now. The human race has gone over two millennia without any further advancement in any atomic sense. Well, I mean, it wouldn't anyway due to the law of conservation of mass. <laughs> but anyways, this English teacher just came out of nowhere and began studying meteorology, which led up to him figuring out the latest in atomic theories, other than the six other theories I'm going to go through. His theory stated, All matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are indivisible and indestructible. All atoms of a given element are identical in mass and properties. Three, compounds are formed by a combination of two or more different kinds of atoms, and a chemical reaction is a rearrangement of atoms. That basically ruled out Democritus' pointy and smooth atoms. They didn't really make a new model. It still was just a spear. Once again... Hello. Oh my god, John Dalton. Next we fast forward to 1856. Joseph John, or J.J. Thompson, was born in Manchester, England. He grew up to be an English scientist, and in 1897 he developed his atomic theory while experimenting with a cathode tube ray. He realized that the now accepted model of the atom did not account for any negatively or positively charged particles. So he created the plum pudding model. He associated the raisins of the pudding to the negatively charged electrons and the dough surrounding the raisins as just positively charged stuff. Flash forward to 1911. Ernest Rutherford proved J.J. Thompson wrong. Ironic thing is, he was J.J.'s student back in the day. Anyway, Ernest and two others, Ernest Martin and Hans Geiger, conducted an experiment that consisted of them firing alpha particles at solid substances such as gold. He found that some rays went through without any change in the direction of the beam, and others deflected at, at a different angle, and others ricocheted right back. He concluded that the atom consisted of a small, dense, positively charged nucleus at the center of the atom with a negatively charged atom electron surrounding it. Now we go back to 1885, to what is the birth of Niels Henrik David Bohr in Copenhagen, Denmark. His childhood was filled with knowledge and education, as his father, Christian Bohr, was professor of physiology at Copenhagen University. Him and his brother grew up in an atmosphere favorable to the development of, of his genius. After taking his master's degree in physics in 1909, he went to work in the Cavendish Laboratory under the guidance of none other than J.J. Thompson. After years of working in that laboratory, he developed his own atomic theory, which said that electrons are arranged in concentric circular orbits around the nucleus. He said that electrons occupy only certain orbits around the nucleus. These orbits are stable and called stationary orbits. Each orbit has an energy associated with it. The orbit nearest the nucleus has an energy of E1, the next orbit E2, etc. Energy is absorbed when an electron drops from a lower orbit to a higher one, and the energy is emitted when an electron falls from a higher orbit to a lower orbit. And lastly, the energy and frequency of light emitted or absorbed can be calculated by using the difference between the two orbital energies. Flash a little while back to 1887. 
Erwin Schrödinger was born in Vienna, Austria. Now flash forward to 1926. The Austrian physicist took the Bohr model a step further. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. The Austrian physicist took the Bohr model a step further using mathematical equations. He described the likelihood of finding an electron in a certain position. The outcome gave him the electron cloud. Where the cloud was densest, the higher, prob the, higher the probability was that you find an electron in that certain area. All right. Almost done. In 1991, James Chadwick was born in Cheshire, England to John Joseph Chadwick and Anne Mary Knowles. He attended Manchester University and graduated from the Honor School of Physics in 1911. He then spent the next two years of his life working in a physical laboratory in Manchester under who other than Ernest Rutherford. Flash forward to 1932. Twas believed that the atom was comprised of a positively charged nucleus orbited by nu negatively charged electrons. Well, in the same year, Chadwick fired beryllium atoms with alpha particles and an unknown radiation was produced. Chadwick felt the radiation to be composed of neutrally charged particles that had about the same mass as a proton. Finally, today, the work of all these men came together to create the modern quantum mechanical model of the atom. Bohr's model was what started to bring in quantum mechanics into the atomic structure of the atom. He started giving the idea of energy levels within the atom, though it took the work of both Schrodinger and Heisenberg to come up with more ways to better describe the energy levels within the atom. But thus, the modern quantum model was born giving light to the actual structure of the atom i had to do so many takes on that whole thing Ugh. being sick is horrible when you're trying to talk fast reading a script it's horrible don't try it at home kids all right i hope you enjoyed thank you for watching this was made for a side project obviously thank you guys for watching so much twitter instagram links in the description below go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.